Well, what differences are there, if any, in dealing with a cast that has to portray supernatural characters in supernatural situations as opposed to realistic characters in real situations? Um, well, I think that for me, when you make a film, you are creating a world, despite the fact that it might look to a lot of people like a, a realistic representation of a world that they're familiar with, in fact, that's an illusion. If you look at films that were supposed to be ultimately the ultimate in realism uh, 20 or 30 years ago, and when you look at them now, they're very studied and very mannered, and, and very uh, uh, there, there are many conventions involved there which the people who made the film weren't even aware of, and they don't look realistic to us at all. Um, so I think you have to accept the fact that when you make a film, you are cre recreating the universe, literally, physically, and, and in every other way. So that, to me then, to deal with a character who has psychic powers, for example, or who is a scanner in my film, Scanners, um, there's no difference. I treat it all as though it were absolutely real within the universe of this film. And I think that that's the way it has to work. It doesn't matter whether you actually believe in the possibility of clairvoyance uh, or, or psychic abilities uh, for scanners to work. For the, m for the time that you're in within the universe of the film, that is the only reality. Those are the rules of that particular universe. And if the film works, then the audience believes that as well. So when I'm dealing with it on the set, uh, as far as the actors are concerned, and as far as I'm concerned, and as far as the crew is concerned, what, is, what we are shooting is absolutely real, as real as anything else. And I think that that's the only way that a film of that nature can, can be made to work, in fact. I talked to David uh, Kronzberg uh, this morning, and he felt that the on-location, especially the cold weather and the reality of the set, gave a, a better performance for the actor. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Um, when you shoot on location, especially something like a cold location, the uh, actor doesn't have to get geared up for all the artificial environment that one may encounter when they're on a Hollywood set. A um, perfect example is the cold breath that one sees in, in throughout the dead zone because it is cold there. I mean, had we shot that on a Hollywood soundstage, we would have had to air condition the stage and bring the temperature way down. So the actors, when they're on location and they're dealing with a certain sense of reality and a big scope, they don't have to put up with so much of the Hollywood artificiality. In a film like The Dead Zone, where you have so many elements working, you have the on-location shoot, you have, of course, the script, you have the actors, uh, you have uh, uh, the cold weather to contend with, you have special effects. Does, does, as a producer, is it hard to keep all the balls in the air and keep them in balance? Shooting on location is very difficult logistically because of all the different people that are involved. Um, you've, we have, um, not only do we have a tight schedule, but we have to bring actors in and out of the city. We have to uh, send dailies to be processed. Um, we have to um, bring in special effects people, horses, tanks, I mean, all the, all the different problems. Um, I much prefer to shoot on location because you get a group of people almost held captive <laughs> and it becomes very much like summer camp and if you can keep the environment fun and each day's work uh... productive then i think you get better better film in blind ambition you portrayed john dean a man immersed in a world of politicians whose morals and actions were questioned was research on that film applicable to the role of greg stilson in the dead zone a man who would literally stop at nothing to get power <laughs> <laughs> well i i will confess it didn't hurt having that background I learned quite a bit about the Watergate, and uh, I, uh, I, I <laughs> you see, I've got to be careful of lawsuits. Uh, but yeah, I did have a, a pretty in-depth knowledge of what went on with the characters uh, behind the scenes in the Watergate, and uh, particularly the cover-up. Uh, so you, you got a pretty good picture. Oh, the whole country, the whole world, really got a pretty good picture of. Uh, some desperate men in a desperate situation, uh, not dissimilar to uh, the character I play in Dead Zone. But I don't think any of those men were really as hideous or sleazy as the uh, character uh, Greg Stilson, who would stop literally at nothing to get to the White House. In one supernatural scene in the Dead Zone, your character pushes the button to end the world, uh, in effect. How do you prepare for a moment like that? Well, remember that the, it's really a fantasy. It happens in the mind of the lead character, Chris Walken. 
he has this uh, psychic uh, power to see into the future. And when I meet him at a campaign rally, uh, he, he shakes my hand, and with the contact, he gets a vision of the future. And that's where this incident takes place in the future, where I become president of the United States, uh, and I decide uh, to push the button and start World War III and end the world, literally. But thank God it's only a, a fantasy, a vision, and uh, it never comes to pass. Well, in, in the dead zone, you had, of course, the, the man's visions as well as reality. Yes. And I think you mentioned at one time that you had made two versions of the, uh, of well, the visions or because yes, there was some, of the mm -hmm. reality. Well, my, uh, un, my concept of how this man's visions, the, the character played by Christopher Walken, how his visions should be conveyed on the screen was that they should be also totally real, physically real, and that in fact they were so real that in some of his visions he would actually physically be within his own visions. He would be present in his visions. And to me that's how the best was the most powerful cinematic way to portray the, the impact of these visions on him. The, 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 because in the script, the story demands that these uh, these visions be physically exhausting and emotionally draining. And I thought that if it, you just played it as though it was something that he was seeing on television or a newsreel running in his head, uh, that, that really wouldn't convey that at all. You could do that in a, in a novel, but it wouldn't work for the screen. So that even there, uh, we're playing the visions as an integral part of this particular character's day-to-day -day reality. Do thrillers or films that deal with something like the supernatural, do you strive for more participation? Is it more of a participative film for an audience than, let's say, just a romantic comedy or, or a, a straight drama? Um, horror genre and thrillers um, require more audience participation because it's um, what we're trying to do is to provoke the audience to emotionally feel something, to respond, to scream, to cry, to jump. Um, and sometimes I think it's a little bit more difficult to do that than in just a drama. It's the same with comedy. You have to get the audience to laugh. Speaking of artificiality, much has been said and done about special effects. What are your feelings about special effects and is there a chance or is there usually, is that kind of a, uh, oh, a temptation to have the, the uh, special effects overwhelm your picture? The Dead Zone uh, is a really good marriage between special effects and good characterizations. And um, at one point, we thought that it was really going to be a real special effects film, which is the reason why we, we geared up for a department of 11 men. We had to recreate things like the 1938 uh, Warsaw-Poland invasion and a incredible car crash and underwater scenes and things like that. And as we got involved in the pre-production of the picture, we decided that uh, we wanted to put our emphasis more onto the characterizations rather than the special effects. And I think it worked out in, in the end where the audience gears more towards the, uh, the emotional feeling of the people rather than the coldness of the effects. Well, being a writer as well as a director, what would you consider your favorite aspects of a film? The story, the effects, dealing with the cast? There's, well, there's been a lot of um, emphasis on special effects uh, in, in the press and media in general, and I think one of the reasons for that is that um, it's, it's sort of an entree into kind of fantasy films for a lot of kids who are very enthusiastic about film, and their first approach to film, the first thing that gets them very excited about it are, are the special effects, uh, partly because of the Star Wars uh, cycle and, and so on. And uh, also it's because they have access to their own special effects. They can put on makeup. There are the, the makeup kits are being sold for kids and um, uh, so on. But in fact, to a filmmaker, that is just one small element. It's one, uh, one tool in your toolbox, really. It's not, it, they're really, in a well-integrated film, in a film that works well on all levels, there really should be no one element that stands out above all the others. If you have a, a, a brilliant story, but everything else is weak, then you really don't have a brilliant story. I mean, it's not told brilliantly. And, and that uh, if you have even one actor who overpowers everyone else in a film, uh, that's not good either. And, and likewise, if you have a film that is very strong on special effects but very weak everywhere else, you really don't have a film that works. Um, so that, uh, for me, 
uh, all of the elements are exciting. I, I, you, you deal with all of them at once, simultaneously. It's not a linear thing. It's a mosaic thing in the sense that everything, is, everything happens at once, and you have to deal with everything at once as a director. Um, and for that reason, uh, it's, like, it's like juggling. N no, not one of the balls that you're juggling is more important than any of the other ones. If you, if you drop one of them, the whole thing is, the whole act is, is blown.